Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a tutorial on this eye look right here. It is a purple glitter half cut crease for hooded eyes that are slightly downturned. I talked about this one in my last video. I used the new ColourPop Butterfly Effect palette. Looks like this, absolutely stunning. The second I seen this palette, I mean this packaging, I was so inspired to do something that kind of mimicked this packaging. So obviously the glitters and just the purple mixed with kind of like the orange and the, and the browns and the terracottas and just that whole like this whole package thing I just love and then I did get the this is the all things glitter palette and there's um, I think one or two of these shades that are in that palette as well but you will see me use these on my lid in this palette here so yeah that's it I do want to keep this short if you are new I want to take a second to welcome you guys to this video and to my channel my name is Lauren Jade I'm 57 I deal with mature crepey wrinkly skin with hooded eyes that are slightly downturned and yes the struggle is real and I know we all have different eye shapes and levels of hoodedness but I'm always looking to pass my tips and tricks on to you guys some of the things that I do are just things that I have found that's most flattering for me on my eye shape and I think and I would encourage anybody you know that's what eyeshadow is all about we're creating shapes with hooded eyes basically because we don't have a crease our crease is a skin fold it's a hood that hangs down so we have to create shape and definition and depth and create a fake crease and all of that so I just have found some things through trial and error that work for me and my eye shape and I'm always looking to pass those on to you guys so yeah that's it if you are new I'd love to have you join me please hit the subscribe button and the post notification bell right next to it that way YouTube notifies you each and every time I upload and yeah that's it if you guys want to see how I created this look using these uh, color pop up palettes then just uh, keep on watching and let's get right into this uh, tutorial so because I don't usually do my face on camera, I usually do that off camera. I know that some of you guys are probably wondering which products I'm using because I do get questions about it from time to time. So I decided to start kind of showing you guys that at the beginning of the video. So you guys will know. And oddly enough, sometimes when I do show the products, it's not my viewers that actually go out and buy them. It's actually other influencers and, and beauty people. It's, it's crazy. But um, so on my face, I'm wearing the Dior. This is the Toco, I can't pronounce it. It's Capture Total or something like that. Anyway, it's in the shade 32. On my face, I decided to, I'm starting to play in the blush bar a little bit more, which looks like this, because I'm always grabbing my cheek leaders, the bronze and the pink squad from this year. So I decided to use this one because I use bronzer on my eyes all the time as you guys know i bronze my crease i did dip into the ofra this is the boho palette this is one of my favorite go-to palettes i grabbed the banana shade to kind of set underneath the eyes for bronzer and blush i'm also wearing the hula bronzer plus this little trio this is the um it cosmetics confidence in your glow and i believe this is shade one or two anyway i got all of them so i'm wearing this one and then i grabbed the ofra highlighter and this one is in the shade beverly hills highlighter so that is what i've got going on on my face and now we are going to get into the video all right i forgot for blush i'm wearing the narcissist wanted one palette all right so that is what is going on on the face now we're ready to prime i'm going to use my max paint pot and soft ochre as always we are in the dead of winter right now so face is a little dry grab a tiny bit of vaseline to kind of mix in with the um, max paint pot because that's drier i do have the p louise bases which i absolutely love one i ordered straight from london and so i am super stoked that of course morphe is selling them i like to kind of pat it in i always used to use a brush but i like to pat it in because with the warmth of the fingers it just kind of melts into the skin a little bit better and then i do grab a brush just so i can kind of carve out a little bit better i usually will grab my zoeva brow brush this is the eyeliner brush and just kind of make sure that everything is carved underneath the brow area oh and what's going on with the hair i'll be taking the hair down later and kind of show you guys how i wear my hair down my hair is so long oh my gosh i have wow there's glitter on this brush from before ah 
canvas here. You guys will probably see glitter flecks kind of throughout because that's kind of what is, was on the brushes. And once you get them on, they're kind of hard to kind of get off. So yeah, they're going to have to just like sit there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, set my, my primer P Louise style. As you guys know, I've said bye-bye to that translucent powder deal. I know that is a very um, one size fits all classic YouTube tutorial style. So if you so for everybody that's YouTube trained, which is everybody on YouTube pretty much, they all do that. And I never really liked that method, so this works much better. This is like a skin tone shade, and I'm putting this everywhere in my upper socket. It's the color that's gonna kind of peek above my little bronzer and just kind of peek above everything. So what I like to do is just kind of pat it in as I'm tapping and pressing. If you have actually mature, crepey, wrinkly skin or hooded eyes, tapping and pressing is literally your best friend. Like not only does it like blend it out for you while you're kind of applying the shadow, you're also kind of getting a nice soft blend, but it also kind of pushes it into the skin. So it kind of gives that lit from within look. It kind of looks like this color is actually coming from within your skin, which is that's what I love is why I always use the bronzer as well. So I'm just going to tap this in. This glitter is really unnerving. All right, I'm going to grab the NYX dual ended brush. I'm going to grab a little bit more of Melt's Blur as always I'm tapping off the excess and I'm just going to go right up here through this socket bone in hopes that maybe I'll knock some of the glitter out of the way. Wow, it's getting up into the brow. Wait, I think I knocked one off. I'm going to, yeah, I forgot. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of the classic shade and just kind of dust this right underneath the brow bone area. I'm gonna kind of drag it down a little bit just to kind of catch the edges of that blur shade. And before I forget and do anything else, I am going to do some baking. So as always, I'm using a mixture of, this is the RCMA white translucent powder mixed with the Ben Nye banana luxury powder. That's a mouthful right there. And I'm just gonna do this because I'm gonna be working with purples and we're gonna be working with the glitter. So I'm gonna get this baking rolling here to catch any fallout. Make sure that this is nice and almost kind of like a, because I do usually wing out my shadows because I like that kind of longer crease effect. So just kind of stamping a little bit kind of right up in here. I was going to use tape today because it's been a hot minute since I've done that method. But all right, filming ought to be very interesting today with all of the Although I think I knocked off most of that glitter with that brush, which is good news, but now it may end up being on something else. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to bronze my crease as per usual that I do in every single video, and I've been using my blush bar lately so that, you know, I'm not always using my cheek leaders, and this is like always like right next to me, so I just usually just kind of grab this. I'm going to Grab the Hula bronzer, and as always, I'm going to work on this inner socket region. I'm gonna kind of connect it to this little nose bridge kind of area right here, and just kind of sweep it up through the front part of the inner socket, kind of up towards the brow area. Oh, just saw a little piece of glitter. And that is what I'm gonna do with this, and then whatever I have left over, on the brush. I'm just gonna kind of dust it through the rest of the socket area. And I'm right here on my orbital bone. So you can see that my natural crease is right here. So I usually work inside my socket crease. And what I'm shading, which is basically what I'm doing now, I'm just kind of sculpting out a little shadow crease. When you do that, it really kind of helps to highlight the, you know, this whole socket region right here and just the shape actually but I just like to shade on my orbital bone because that's kind of mimicking a quote, fake crease. So that is what I'm doing with this. I am shading my orbital bone out here, just kind of sculpting out kind of a fake shadow crease. I'm using just this cool tone shade 
from the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. You really need to look down into your mirror when you're contouring and when you are highlighting the socket bone because you've got to be able to see your socket line. So when you're working, if you're contouring, you really need to look down into the mirror. You need to access your lid space, yes, but even more than that, you've got to be able to get in there and get high up into this socket area. And the only way that you can really do that is by looking down into the mirror so you can get up as high as you can so you can hollow out the socket shape. So that is why you need to look down into the mirror. Yeah, I'm gonna mix this yellow with this kind of terracotta shade and I'm gonna pack that into this upper socket crease. I'm gonna take a little bit of both shades and I'm just gonna kind of pack this in here. Getting into this socket area right here. Taking a little bit of it on this outer section right here. And as I'm putting this in, I'm making sure that I'm holding the brush kind of horizontal so I can get the color exactly where I want it, which is right in this socket area right here. And by tapping and pressing, you're also kind of blending it out kind of at the same time. But what I like about this brush, this is the M433, but like the Sigma E25, the MAC 217, um, Crown has one, it's a C511. They're pretty much all basically the same type of brush. They're really kind of flat, but they're tapered. So the bristles on the side of the brush are gonna just kind of do the blending for you. So just kind of lift that brush up and just kind of glide it along and it'll kind of blend it out right there. Now when I'm doing my, um, I'm also gonna kind of wing this out a little bit, kind of towards the tail of the brow. All right, cool. So now I'm just going to, I like how that looks. I've kind of warmed up the crease up here and now I'm just gonna kind of blend this out towards like this like powder line right here and just kind of buff out these edges. I do go kind of close to my brow, just not right up next to it because I do like a nice light kind of a brow bone shade, but I am definitely working this warmth upwards so that this is gonna kind of peek through and be the main, you know, what you see above like the purples and stuff. So, and then I am flicking this all out to this edge. And like I said, I was gonna use tape today, um, but, I realized I wanted to do the baking to kind of catch any glitter fallout that might happen, especially when you're working with darker shades like the purples and all of that. I know it's really hard to tell, but my pressure is super light with this brush. I always hold it towards the back too because then you get really, really light pressure. And that's kind of what you want when you're blending. You know, if you're just kind of applying the shadows, you know, it's kind of medium pressure. But when you're blending, really, really light. It kind of gives you that light, airy, airbrushed effect, which is what we all want in the blending world. I'm super excited because I'm using my ColourPop brush set again today. All of us that do this, I, I swear, we, we all probably have hundreds of brushes. I know I do. And it's just fun when you can use, I, I don't know, I just like to use certain brushes with certain brands. So, I don't know. I'm going to grab this one. This is the E15. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to kind of build up the purples now. And because I spent some time laying down the foundation of these colors and just kind of building this foundation, these brighter purple shades will just kind of have an effortless, seamless blend. You guys will see that. It will just be seamless. You've got to spend time. If you don't spend time on the front end, you've got to spend a whole lot of time on the back end. And it's just a lot easier to do the apply and blend and to layer and build. They are just techniques that have proven time and time again to work and it's just the way to get a nice seamless blend. So that is what we are doing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade and this one and then I'm gonna go into this deeper one all by itself. Just going to really put 
put this on this outer corner right here and I'm just kind of doing a light wash right now and just kind of starting to introduce this purple into the socket in this outer section right here. I'm just getting a nice wash of color. I am taking this a little bit higher than my natural crease. I'm kind of bringing it kind of right in through this little outer area right here, but I'm not going above like the bronzer shade and that orangey terracotta shade that I put in. I'm staying kind of right inside the socket and really just trying to get a nice diffused wash of color. I'm also pushing it out towards the temple in the direction of the brow. Now I'm gonna to switch to the ColourPop E16 brush and now I'm just going to go into this shade all by itself. Same thing, I'm gonna start right kind of out here in this kind of outer V section of my little, kind of, I call this my little plug and play area. It's kind of like right out in here and I'm just gonna take it down like in a diagonal here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of it into this crease socket. So a little bit above my natural crease as well. I'm just kind of deepening it up. But I'm not gonna blow this color like out like I did like that first round, a little bit lower here. Now I'm gonna use the, this is the SLS Miss Glam Angle W20 brush. And I'm just going to deepen up right out here. Just kind of turn, I love these angle brushes. I have a whole bunch of them because they're just so good for like this outer section right here. Just gonna kind of put in a little bit all right, now we're gonna dip into the James Charles palette and I'm gonna go into these two shades right here, which is Single and Escape, and they're the two purple ones. This one is just slightly deeper than the shade that I was using. And then I'm gonna dip into this one and I'm using this angled liner brush. I usually use a Sigma one. This palette is so incredibly huge. So I'm gonna grab the lighter and a little bit of that deeper shade and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my little wing tip and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to kind of grab right here on the lower lash line because I'm going to follow this lower lash line straight on up and I'm taking it. So this is kind of like straight up. So if I were to continue this line, it would go right on up to my brow and I'm going to take it down just a couple of millimeters. I'm doing a little bit more of a pulled out cat eye look today. When you start from your lower lash line, like your waterline down here, and you just kind of drag it up, you kind of get that precise, you know, you make sure that you are right in alignment. So this is kind of like right where it would be, and then I'm just going to extend it down just a couple millimeters. And if you want more of that, a super wide kind of that pulled out, that really, you know, that cat eye effect, you'd want to kind of go a little bit more straight out for me. And what I like, I kind of like there to be a little bit of an uplift just because my eyes are slightly downturned. So I'm all about pulling everything upwards. Okay, so now you can kind of see these two little wing line that I got going on here. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab, hold on a second, I gotta get rid of this palette here. All right, I completely forgot. I've got this face candy. This is the Disco Fever palette. And I really wanted to use this magenta shade right here. I completely forgot. So I'm just gonna dust a little bit of that in through the crease socket right here. And I'm just going to kind of follow my natural bone structure, which is kind of what I've been doing all along. And I'm just going to kind of bring it on up and over. My orbital bone shape and my natural bone structure is kind of a little bit lower out here. And then it kind of 
goes up as I kind of get in through here. So that's just kind of what I'm following. I completely forgot that I wanted to include this into this look. Just really lightly. I didn't take much at all. Really just super lightly. I'm kind of bringing that up and around to kind of hug this little eye area. And I'm making sure that I keep it kind of right where my little end is here. I'm just kind of bringing this in. That way my wing tip is going to be in alignment with my eyeshadow, which is what I want. And I took this wing tip out a little bit past my natural crease. So kind of like right where my fake crease would be. So just slightly above the natural crease. So everything is in alignment. So now I'm going to grab the James Charles color right here and I'm going to use a I think I'm going to go in with where is my Sigma E65 winged liner brush which is right here sorry all right I'm going to go back to this purple and I'm going to start to kind of build up the actual wing and then we are going to smoke out the wing I'm just going to go out here and I'm just going to do a little small connecting dots here just gonna kind of connect right out here just to get a really small wing and then I'm gonna grab a flat definer brush as always and I'm going to stamp and wiggle as always you guys know that I always do this step in every tutorial so I'm just kind of getting it really close to the lash line here which is kind of adding some depth and dimension into these lashes. I'm gonna go back and grab a little bit more of this shade on this Morphe 506 brush, one of my favorite detailed crease brushes. And I'm just going to put that right on top of that purpley shade and just kind of smoke it out a little bit. The nice thing about this wing tip right here is that your wing now is in total alignment with your eyeshadow. So when I go right out here to this tip, I'm kind of bringing it in. And then I'm also bringing it into my natural crease. So everything from this point to where the wing tip is all going in. So now my winged liner is in alignment with my eyeshadow shape. I'm just going to smoke this up here. And then I'm gonna drag in a little bit more. I'm not taking it up too high, just enough to kind of take a really tiny little brush. I think this one is a Luxie mini round brush. It's just, I know it doesn't have any product on it and that's what I want. I'm just gonna tap out these edges right here of this line. That way when I go to blend it out, it's just so much easier. I love the tap and press method because it's literally like the eyeshadow is just like an effortless like blending out for you. So let me show you what I'm gonna do next, so I'm gonna stick with the same brush right here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this yellow and just kind of pull down right over the edge of that purple. Boom, seamless melt, and that is exactly what we want. You know what, I forgot. I do wanna grab just a pinch of this purpley shade right here, so I'm gonna take it on this little Luxie pencil brush because I'm gonna be pretty exact with this and I just wanna put this like in the deepest part of this outer V, just kind of right on top basically of that wing and just kind of take it in a little bit. Keeping it pretty low, but I'm gonna connect it to this little wing tip right here. Just so that I kind of have that angle of everything kind of going upwards towards like the brow gonna tap this on 
and bring it in here. And then I'm gonna pull it out and connect it to the wing tip right here, which is above my natural crease. So I'm putting this inside my natural crease, then I'm pulling it out and kind of connecting it. So it kind of goes up a little bit and then connecting it to this little, this little wing tip right here. We like everything to kind of have that little upward lift. I'm gonna use the P. Louise base in the shade Zero. You guys know that I always used to use my NYX shadow base. I had to wait forever for Morphe to get this one in stock so that I wouldn't have to order it from the UK. I ordered my first um, P. Louise base and brushes and center palette, secret center palette, all from the UK came. So naturally I wanted to get it a little bit quicker. So I had to wait for Morphe to restock this. And this is just kind of going in this upper section here. This is where I'm gonna be placing the shimmer and the glitter. So I'm not taking this like all over, but you guys know that I love a white because I really love amplifiers. I love anything that really amplifies. I'm gonna take it down here just a little bit too. And then I'm gonna use a shimmer underneath the um, glitter just because that's what I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to grab this shade right here and maybe a little bit of this one as kind of a gradient just so that everything is kind of married together. We want everything really seamless. So I'm going to start with this purple one out here, the darker one. So it just kind of meshes into the purple out here. And then I'm going to flip the brush over and grab that lighter purpley one and put that out here. Flip the brush back over and kind of mesh these two together. Now I'm gonna kind of go back over with the M433 brush right here and just kind of go over the border where the shimmers meet the mat and just kind of smooth everything out and just kind of dust away any excess shimmers just so that everything is in a nice alignment here. And now I'm going to grab the James Charles palette again. I'm going to go into the lighter purpley shade, which is this one right over here. And I'm going to, well, I'm going to mix a little bit of both of them, actually the lighter and the darker. And I'm just going to kind of stamp this on the lower part of the lash line. I went ahead and put the other bronzer shades and the terracotta in here. So, and I'm keeping this dark really close to the waterline, really close in, and I'm not taking it all the way in. I'm just keeping this on this outer section right here. I am going to drag it up a little bit. I usually like to connect the wing with the lower lash line smoke. And I'm just gonna touch up my little wing out here. I cannot live without a flat definer brush. It's just, it basically just does the work for you. You just kind of stamp and connect. It's just super easy to work with. Stamp and connect. Kind of deepening up the base of that wing. And I'm not gonna do black at all. A lot of times I like to do a nice gradient of smoke with the wing. All right, so being super honest, because that's just how I roll here, I love these types of glitters and I have a boatload of all of these different types. This is the Tutti Frutti liquid glitter. These have like a doe foot applicator and then this one does too and the Stila, these are the Stila and the Morphe and then of course my Holy Grail, the heavy metal glitter liner in the shade Midnight Cowboy. These are super easy to work with. There's no need to add any more additional like adhesive unless you just like want that extra insurance. So I love these. Pressed glitters are literally my least favorite to work with. I even like loose glitters over pressed, but these ColourPop ones are are chunky and they ended up being in places you know a few days later so they're stunning and they're beautiful but they're my least favorite glitter type to work with so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this shade I think I want to use this one and this one I believe is also in that other all that glitters little mini palette so I'm gonna take I think this so my method of working with glitters it doesn't matter if it's a pressed glitter if it's like 
you know, any kind of glitter. I always like to have a little extra insurance because, you know, it is glitter. My favorite is the Anastasia. This is the um, glitter adhesive, and I like it because it's like a little nail polish type bottle like this with an applicator. So what I like to do is I'm going to grab a Petri dish. Hold on. All right, so I put a tiny couple of drops on this cap on this little Petri dish here, and I'm going to use the this is the ColourPop little lip brush. And I'm just going to dab right where I'm planning to place the glitter. And I don't want to mess with this chunky glitter too much, so I'm just going to use a brush. I know I can't get my fingers right in there, so I'm going to pick up this little mixture here and just kind of press it on into the front. I'm not going to do as much of the glitter as I did in the last look. I'm keeping this kind of like just in this little inner corner right in here. And I popped a little bit of that lighter shade on the inner corner highlight. I think it was this one I took. So obviously you guys seen I popped on some false eyelashes for the look. Now I am not a huge false eyelash person at all. I cannot stand them. I think they look great on other people. I just do not like them. I don't like to mess with them. And they also take away some of my lid space that I've got going on, um, you know, with the hooded eye situation. But anyway, the glitter is stunning. Wow, I honestly have no glitter fallout. All right, on my lips, I'm wearing the Morphe Toots Lip Liner along with the Sisley. This is in the shade Diamond. It's just a Fido Lip Star from Sisley. And I have this lip gloss in like a purple um, that would have been stunning with this look, but I can't find it. All right, so I'm going to spray the face. And I wonder, I think I'm just going to use this setting spray. This is the Power Up Dual Phase Setting Mist. I actually got this in my BoxyCharm box. And then we are going to take the hair down. <sighs> this is my favorite part. I have really long hair, and I'm thinking about cutting it all off and going back to kind of like shoulder length and going blonde again because well it's been a year and usually what I do is I get my highlights done like once a year so when I want to do my hair kind of beachy kind of beachy I will just kind of throw my hair up and this is a wrap thing that I got on Amazon, and I'm gonna unwrap the hair. So basically, I just kind of roll my hair up. So basically what I do is I take it and I twist it once like this, and I'll just kind of roll it and roll it and roll it and roll it. And then I just kind of, it like has like a uh, metal thing in there that just kind of bends. So that's usually what I do with the hair Oh, can't really do much with it because it is so long and this is a little wrap like this and it ha opens up like this because you can like put your hair inside here and then wrap it up into like a bun bogus missing hair there and and then it just kind of like snaps like in place so I'm gonna move this mirror here so you can see so this is the hair here. This is what is going on here with this thing. So yeah, just really, really long and I'm in need of a haircut. I gotta have the mirror back so I can see what's going on. So yeah, that's what's going on here with this situation. All right, so that is it. It does drive me crazy. I do updos all the time because it's just so long I don't even have do I have another clip here that I can just grab here I doubt it all right so that is it you guys that's it I'm gonna get it so I can at least speak here all right that's it I'm done 
done messing with this hair. Okay, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you guys liked this look. We definitely will be seeing a lot of me doing ColourPop because if you guys remember my last video, I showed you my huge stack of new ColourPop palettes that I have gotten as of late. So, all right, that's it. I love you guys and thank you so much for watching. I will see you all hopefully in my next video. Wow, so here's an update. It has literally been like five hours since I filmed that tutorial and I still have no glitter fallout.